the video is now rolling. Okay, so we're gonna talk. He keeps asking, I need a break. You need, okay, would you give him his pencil back and go get a pencil from my desk, please. Okay, so we're done with this. Thank you. All right. Okay, so we're gonna talk about simplifying radicals. For some of you, it's total review, right? But I have to be sure you guys know it because it's important stuff. Um, and, um, well, I don't know, to be honest with you, I say it's important stuff. To be honest with you, I don't think it's all that important. Um, uh, well, I'll tell you why. Because this whole process that I'm gonna teach you right now was designed and invented before we had calculators, right? And to be honest with you, it's way easier when I want to simplify the square root of 48. It's much easier for me to simplify it with a calculator and go 48 square root, and I've suddenly got an answer, right? That's really quite, quite, quite helpful, you know, because a lot of times you'll just use that method when you're solving problems. However, there are ways to simplify this where you still have a radical sign. When I use a calculator, guys, when I re use a calculator, I'm only getting an approximate answer, right? Because it's going on forever and ever and ever and ever, right? A lot of times, right? And so it's not an exact answer. So then I suddenly have to do the approximate sign, right? Right? So the square root of 48 is, is more accurate than saying 16 times three, well actually, it's more accurate than um, using a calculator. Where the heck is a calculator? Where should we take that? He, yes. Only if, well, Nate's group definitely. I mean, the people who had Nate last year definitely. And the people who had me last year, I think you should, you should if you don't remember, okay? Yes. Can I just point out, so um, people, um, like approximate signs, what's like, um, John's people John's what? Okay. Well, wait. This is a vi this is a video. So let me just let me just focus. So, so what we're going to do? First of all, let's just look at what we know. What's the square root of sixteen? Four. So, you're saying the square root of sixteen is the same as the square root of four times four. Am I right? Yes. And the answer is four. You're right. Am I right? Yes. Now that's interesting. Yeah. Go that way. So. So that's interesting. When I have two of the same numbers under a square root sign and they're being multiplied, they can be brought out of the square root sign as one of those four, one of those two, right? Numbers, right? You get it? So let's see, square root of 25 is what? Five. It's the square root of five times five, right? Because you're looking for square root means what number times itself equals that number, right? You guys know this part, right? You know what a square root is? Everybody? Yeah, we all know what square root is. Okay. All right. So, square root, the, what number times itself? Five, five times itself equals 25. When I have two of the same number under a square root sign and they're being multiplied, they come out as one of them. And so you would, whoops, already have it equal to So you have five. Square root of 49. Seven. 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 It's the square root of seven, seven times, times seven. seven. So I have seven. two of those, it comes out as a seven, right? Yeah. You guys get that, right? All right, so there's two ways. Sometimes, though, you don't get radicals that are perfect squares. All these are perfect squares, right? Two times two is four. Three times three is nine. Four times four is 16. Five times five is 25. Those are all perfect squares. But what if I gave you something that isn't? For example, I gave you, I was, I showed you this one, the square root of 48. With the what? So there's two methods. There's two methods. One method is to say, to, to factor it with a tree. And here we go. We've got, I know, let's see, 4 times 12, don't you agree? Yes. And then 4 is 2 times 2, right? Yeah. And then 12 is 2 times two, 6, three. right? And 6 is 2, two times three. 3. Okay, I have now gotten down to all my prime numbers. You agree with me? All my prime numbers. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 is 48. So I could rewrite this as 2 times 2 
times two times two times three. Oh. Okay? Right? Don't you agree with me? Oh, I yeah, this but is the is same thing as this. Two th these two are exactly the same. Two times two is four. Four times two is eight. Eight times two is sixteen. Six times sixteen times three is forty-eight. Okay. Right? 16. It works. Now, what did we learn over here, though? Yeah. We learned the square root. Then you're paying attention, right? Just yes. To be sure. Okay. Right. We noticed that whenever we had two of the same number, we could circle it. And that one of those would come outside, and then the other one would disappear, right? Oh, Follow me? Seven times seven comes out as just one seven, right? Comes mm -hmm. out of the radical sign as one seven. Yes, you get that? Sam, you get that? Right? Yeah. So look, here's two twos. I'm going to circle those two twos. Those are going to come out as a two. And out technically is here, right? But I like to, anywhere out for now is fine. I like to put them outside up above, and then I will eventually put them in front. Does it make sense? So watch this. Two twos, square root of two times two, this is two, right? Yeah. Yes? All right, here's another two type twos. That's going to come out as a two. They're going to be multiplied times each other. There's not two threes. You see that? So that three has to stay under, OK? Uh, four times um, three. I just have to be sure I didn't mess up my did. All right. And that's okay. 12. All right. So what is four, 2 times 2? Four. 4. 4. So really, the 4 is going to be outside, and the square root of 3 is inside. So I just simplified. The square root of 48 is the same thing as 4 times the square root of 3. Oh, OK. Right? Yeah. Now, so now I if I wanted to know. If I wanted to know what it was with it, you know, in a decimal form, I'd have to use my calculator. So let me ask you this. Which is easier? 48 square root or 4 times 3 square root? 48, 48 square root, root right? That's much faster. You know what I mean? Or a little faster, at least. Maybe not much. It is but much faster. it's definitely pretty fast. It's a lot faster if I consider I had to do this first to get to that, <laughs> right? But this, was, this process was invented when, before we had these things, right? It is still useful because this and this is more accurate than when I do 48 square root and I get, I get 6 point, approximately 6.928203, and it goes on forever and ever and ever, right? So I don't really have the exact answer here, whereas that, those two are the exact answers. So sometimes when I'm doing a calculation, like getting to you know planet Neptune, right, and making sure that the spaceship is going exactly in the right direction, I may not want to use an abbreviated number. I may want to use the actual real thing. Does that make sense? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So so sometimes you just you you want to be totally accurate. Okay. So now let's just talk about. So that's one way to simplify. Another way to do it is this, square root of 48. I could ask myself, what perfect squares go into 48? Does 4 go into 48? Oh, 6 and 8. Does four, is 4 is a perfect square. 4 times 12, right? Right? So 4 is a perfect square, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Square root of 4 is 2, yeah. right? It has a perfect square root. Is there another 4 in this? The 12? 4 times 3. That's 4 times 3. Oh, 4 times 4 is 12. 12, I mean 16. 16 times 3 is 48. So the square root of 48 is the same as the square root of 16 times 3. You guys agree with me? Yes. All right, let's think about it. I did. 4 times 12 is 48. Why can't you just write it out? Write what out? Like 4 times 3 times 3. You can. You can. Totally can. I could do that. I'll just do it that way. It's fine. So I have 4 times 4 times 3. Immediately I see the two 4s. That's going to come out as 1 4. So my final answer is 4 square root of 3. So, right. But notice, we didn't have to go down to, to, to the prime numbers. As soon as we noticed we had two of the same number, even though they're not prime numbers, it was OK. That saved me some time. Do you see what I'm saying? That saved me some time. 
instead of going 2 times 2 and then have to write 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, I just had to write 4 times 4, right? So that, would, that saved me some time. Now, I might have done it like this. I might have said immediately, oh, well, I happen to know that 16 goes into 48 three times, so 3 times 16. So suddenly, I could go like this, square root of 16 times 3. But in this case, this is, I can separate these, right, to the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. Right? You see that? When you multiply numbers underneath the radical sign, you can separate them into their own separate radical signs. So what's the square root of 16? 4. 4. So I could say this is 4 squared of 3. So those are all different ways you can do it. You can use the tree method, the tree factorization method, or if you automatically know that 48 is 16 times 3, 16 is a perfect square. The square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 3. So now that I've done all, let's just try it. Let's practice, okay? Let's just practice. And um, you, guys practice can, on the whiteboard. you guys can tell me, not yet, let's just practice a few up here first, okay? Just to be sure. And then we'll do whiteboard. I just want to be sure you guys understand it. Right? So let's say square root of um, uh, 27. Is there a perfect square that goes into 27? Nope. No. How do you get 27? What times what is 27? 9 times 3. Is 9 a perfect square? Yeah. Yes. Oh. So is there a perfect square that goes into 27? Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's what I thought. Okay. So you're saying that that's 9 times 3. Am I right? Yes. Let's try it. Square root of 9 times 3 is the same as the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. What's the square root of 9? 3. So it equals 3 square root of 3. Yes? You get that? Yes. Make sense? Yeah. Wait. So square root of 27. No, no, no. I, I, get, I, get, I get that. I don't. Never, 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 never. So I stopped here. Now some people might have chosen to do this. No, it's not that. Nine is three times three. It's not that. So three good. times three times three. So I could say the square root of three times three times three. Two of them comes out as a three. So I have three square root of three. Now, which is easier for you guys? The other, the first one, the equals nine. This yeah. is easier. Yep. Okay. Now, when I do it, I don't usually separate them like this. I, I know I can, but I don't. So what I do is I say square root of 9 is 3. So I put my 3 up here. Okay, that crosses out, and I, that, there's nothing for that. So then I just have 3 square root of 3. Right? You with me? I'm just showing you shortcuts, right? So this is new for some of you, but it's review for most of you. So... I'm just wanting to be sure that I don't lose you, because I usually do it a little slower, right? Than, I, than I'm doing it today, but it's just because I have a mixture of people. But let's see, we have square root of 32. So if you don't know what goes into it, we just do our, our tree factorization. Two times what? Oh, um, 16. 16. Oh wait, what about 16? Oh, what is four. that? Four. So that's a perfect square, right? Yeah. So I could immediately write that as the square root of 16 times 2. The square root of 16 is what? Four. four. So that's going to, I'm going to cross out the 16. I'm going to put the 4 outside the square root sign. Square root of 2. So it gives me 4 square root of 2. Right? You get it? Yes. Yeah. Make sense? I don't get how it works, but I'm going to follow the rules. Yeah, just follow the rules. Like it's a simple, it's like a simple process, but it's also kind of a it's it's confusing, but the process is easy. All right, 24. Oh, square root of 24. Here we go. What goes in 24? Six and four. Six and four. Six and four. Two and oh, two. Two. Two and two four. and four. Four, two. So four, two, and two. Two and two. Two times two is four, Gary. Okay. <laughs> and then this one is two times three. Three times two. Right? Yeah. So that would tell me that this is going to be 2 times 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 2
times two times three, right? Oh. And what can I do now? Oh, you could you like could uh, circle the twos and then two of the twos. That's going to come outside as one two. Yeah. And then there's there's not two twos here and there's not two threes, so they have to stay in. So it's two times two times. So one, what is? It's two times the square root of two times three. It's Gary's math. It's this two two, two two times the square root of six, right? Yes. 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 Good job. Right? It makes sense. Gary. See it? See it? Yeah. yeah. I was doing a five. Would you do it? Oh, okay. Great. All right. Here we go. Okay, can we do my Let's try another one. How about the square root of uh, fifty? Square root of fifty. Oh, oh twenty-five oh, and twenty-five. Times two. I mean, twenty-five times two. Twenty-five oh, times yeah, two. Why is everyone stealing the thunder? Okay. Uh, twenty-five is the square root of five. Okay. Five times five. So I've got the square root. Five square root of two. 25 times 2. And I immediately, I know the square root of 25 is 5, right? Square root of 2. So I'm going to cross that out. And that's going to be a 5 that's going to come outside. So it's 5 square root of 2. Right? With me? Everybody gets this, right? Am I yes. right? Yeah. Just the 5, just so I know. Please the 5. All right. Gary, what this if is I easy. gave you this? What if I gave you this? 700. Square root of 700. Oh. Oh, yes. oh, 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 I forgot. <laughs> okay, Lena. 100 times 7. 100 times 7. Isn't 100 a perfect square? Yes. Yeah, 10. 10, oh my god. So the square root of 100 times 7, square root of 100 is 10. So that's going to come out as a 10. So I have 10 square root of 7. No, oh, okay, Gary. honestly, Gary, Gary, I'm being pulled. <laughs> Yeah, really, 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 I know. Really, really, really. Okay. What if I gave you square root of 75? Square root of 75. Oh, I know. Yes. 25 times 3. 25 times 3, right? And then square root of 25 is 5. 5 square root of 3. So the square root of 25 times 3. Square root of 25 is 5. So we have 5 square root of 3. Right? Okay. That's awesome. Now, yes. So, are there any cases where it would be like, um, like if there was a number that had more than one, num like multiples that had a square root? Like, say, um, say. Well, yeah, like, I mean, all of these, I mean, 100 could, I could have done, you know, 2 times, I mean, 4 times 25, 25 times 7. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so is that like. A but, but, but that? see, it, it, we just did it the simple way, but like, I could have done. Let me just erase this. Like this, I could have said, oh, well, 100 is 4 times 25. And 4 is 2 times 2. And 25 is 5 times 5. So 2 times 2 times 5 times 5 times 7 is 700. What I mean is, like, could you, like, use a different multiple completely? Like, 25 times whatever, whatever. Like, like 700 can be 25 times something. Yes, it can. So could it you would be, Technically, it would be um, 25 times... 4 times 7, which is 28. 25 times 28, which should be 700. Oh, okay. So, you mean? 25 so here we go. We got 25 times 28, right? So square root of 25 is 5. So I have 5 times the square root of 28. The only thing is, 28 could be 4 times 7. Don't you agree with me? Yeah. So I could say 5 times the square root of 4 times 7. The square root of 4 is 2. I'm going to multiply that times the 5. So that gives me 10 square root of 7. And that's what I got here, 10 square root of 7. Right? It always works. It always works. There are different ways you can do it. Totally. Totally. Now, really, fist of 5, you guys get it? Yes. OK. We should stop the video. Right. Can I show you one last thing? Yeah. It's, not, it's, it's, it's moving into equations with radicals. No, okay. can't we just do radicals? We are. That's Same. what I'm talking about. Radicals. radicals. I know. It's only because of tomorrow. I'm no here. progress right? in radicals. Okay. Here we go. So this is solving radical equations, okay? I'm throwing a lot at you today. Radical I'm throwing a lot at you, but it's, it's, it's important. What if I gave you something like this? X plus 2. Actually, let's keep it simple. Let's say... Um, 
the square root of x is equal to um, 5. How would I solve that? Yeah. You know how with you know how with multiply and divide they're like opposite operations. You know what I mean? One of them cancel out the other. If if I've got a two and somebody comes in and multiplies it times ten, and then it gives me a twenty, I could undo what they did by doing the opposite. I could divide by ten, and that would give me back to two. Do you agree? They're opposite operations. Well. Square roots and squares are opposite operations. When I square a square root sign, it gets rid of the square root sign, right? But I have to square both sides. So suddenly that gives me x is equal to 25. You see that? Yeah. So whenever you have an equation that has a square root sign in it, like this, square root of x plus 2 is equal to 10, right? I want to get rid of the square root sign. It's important that the square root sign is isolated. Like there's nothing else on this side. I don't have a minus 17 right here. I don't, if I did, I'd have to add 17 to both sides. But right now, that's isolated. So I can square this and square this, right? And when I square a square root, it, they cancel each other out. So now, all I have is left x plus 2 is equal to 100. Right? And then I subtract 2 from both sides, and I get x is equal to 98. Pretty easy, really, right? So these are actually among the easiest kind of problems to solve. And when you first see them, you think, oh my god, that, they look so hard. But they're so easy. Just by squaring both sides, you've just simplified, you know, and solved for x, basically. Yes? With logic there, wouldn't x square root of x, well, wouldn't x equal 25? Because square root of 25 is equal to 5. Correct. With so logic, you can use logic as well. But 98 logic. isn't, 5 times 5 is not 98. That's this Logic. One. This is this one. Oh. I, this one oh. is this one. x is 25, you're right. All right, this was the first one. Here's, that was number one. Here's number two. Sorry, you get it? Yeah. yeah what's okay. Logic? What? What's logic? That's a good question. I have not a clue. Okay, now can we do my voice? All right. Well, we will run out of time. The, the, the <laughs> tomorrow, oh, we'll, yeah, tomorrow we'll do whiteboards probably. Do you plan it this way? Is, no, is Nate going to come back before science? I planned it this way so you couldn't ask any questions and embarrass me. Huh. Oh, wow. He know, he know you know you were embarrassing. Okay. Uh, is Nate going to come back before science tomorrow? Yeah, because we have our double block tomorrow.